looks like we have a nice group. So good evening, everyone. I'll, uh, I'll hand it over to, to Father Dave, uh, some opening remarks and a prayer. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Eric. Uh, welcome to session number 19. Can you believe it? <laughs> mm. Of our uh, SSS uh, training uh, events. It's good to welcome you tonight, and uh, we're looking forward to having a great session tonight of sharing results of our uh, fall uh, campaign. So, but before we do that, let us pray. Abundant God, you made us in your image and breathed in us a spirit of generosity that is both gift and response. Move us, we pray, to give as we have received, abundantly, generously, and joyfully, that our common ministry may ever bear witness to your unfailing grace. We pray this prayer, and indeed all of our prayers, in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Okay, thank you, Father Dave, and thank you everybody for, for joining us tonight. Uh, we uh, we expect that we we may have a few uh, a few new folks on the call, um, and uh, we've extended the invitation a, a little uh, a little more broadly this time because we we're, we're really interested in not only hearing from those of you who have been part of this as we've been uh, working on stewardship uh, campaign planning since really since July. Um, we've also invited those who uh, perhaps had not been on the calls to join in, and we can talk about uh, lessons learned. And uh, and ways that we can plan for the for the new year. Um, so tonight we we uh, would really like to to talk about the follow up steps. So we've touched on them briefly uh, in the last session, uh, but of course last session we were really focused on what was coming up. Uh, so so uh, so we'll we'll touch on that. Just the follow up steps that should be taking place. We have a few example communications to uh, to go over, um, and uh, talk about reporting the results. Um, and uh, and other year, and then talk about some other year end strategies, and then to to really start to uh, uh, to lay the groundwork for 2021 and and how um, the diocese can uh, can be there to to serve you and your continued efforts. Uh, so uh, we'll talk about the project resource and and really how that's going to. Um, uh, 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 take a, a, a really important role going into the new year, um, and um, and to just talk about you know lessons learned from this year's pl uh, program, things that we can all share with each other. Uh, so uh, so we look forward to the conversation. Uh, before we we get going, um, we'd love to hear from you on a few poll questions here. So if there are some new things that you tried this year. Uh, now this doesn't incorporate uh, encompass all the things that we normally do in uh, the annual annual campaigns, but you know, there, hopefully there are some new things in here. Um, we'd like to hear from you. Uh, what what are some of the things that you've tried this year that perhaps you didn't try before? Um, so if you wouldn't mind taking taking a few minutes, we we have a few poll questions that we'll what we want to run today, um, but this will give us a sense for um, you know what are what are some of the new activities that are that are taking place. And actually, and as, as we talk about uh, lessons learned, we're really curious to see which ones of these will, will really remain um, as, as we go forward. Evelyn, I'm going to trust you with the uh, the percentage participating. I don't have that that power today. <laughs> That's okay. I don't need it. <laughs> okay. So, um, uh, it, uh, so e uh, a, a lot of you are doing email blasts as part of this uh, virtual testimonials. That's great to hear. We'd really love to hear um, as as we go along. You know what might might have been some of the things that worked well on that front, um, and uh, other things that you would you would recommend that we we uh, do to make them better. Uh, virtual commitment Sunday, that's that's terrific, um, and then so, some other uh, er, er, ways that that some of you have reached out using phone calls and and uh, um, and had some events. So so thank you. This was this was really helpful. Good to, good to uh, um, good to know. So. Um, 
All right. So I'm going to close this on my end. Um, I'm sorry. Did did uh, did you did you all see this, I, or was I just reading off of mine? <laughs> okay, good. All right. <laughs> so, all right. Thanks. So, uh, so as you know, as as we uh, um, you know, we think about the things that should be uh, you know on our minds right now. Now that the hopefully most of you have had your uh, your annual campaigns come to a, a conclusion. Uh, if you haven't, uh, you know, we'd, we'd love to hear from you and, and talk about that in ways that we can help you, uh, whether it's this weekend or the following weekends or, or whenever you have a, have a plan to close us out. Uh, but for, the, for those of you who, and it's probably the majority on the call that have completed, things that we should really be thinking about now are how can we report the results as soon as possible uh, so that you can share the good news and and keep encouraging those who have yet to respond. So uh, so having an update on your progress, thank you letters once again a, a very important thing to uh, to have happen as soon as possible. Uh, a thank you letter from from clergy um, and the leaders uh, you know it's a really important first step. And this is different from the pledge confirmation statement, which is which is the next one on the the line. Uh, and that's important as well because you you want to to uh, uh, once again uh, thank them for that commitment that they've made, but also to to really uh, formalize it in such a way that they are aware of the the way that they made their commitment and gives them an opportunity to uh, to to contact you or the treasurer should they need to make a change in that. Um, there's also the follow-up letters letters to those people who have yet to respond. Ideally, it's a small group of, of folks, but, you know, people who have responded in previous years, you know, you should think about sending them a special letter. Um, and then people who perhaps are new or have you, have never pledged, think about a different kind of letter for them. Uh, but in any case, just to follow up and, and make sure that we're reaching out to those who have yet to participate. And then to, to really think about the, the ways that we can uh, take the reporting from the preliminary reports that should be happening right now, to a more final report that happens when you report to the vestry and how the results uh, compared to pre prior years. Um, and then to think about the report that you'll be making to the congregation about the stewardship program. Um, so all things that um, you know, should, should be, we should be considering and planning for, and it's a good, it's a good opportunity for, you know, for some immediate next steps to, uh, to take place. Um, and, uh, and, and of course, you know, just, just making sure that we're at every moment, um, uh, have, you know, uh, responding with gratitude and making sure that everybody feels, um, like, uh, like their support is greatly appreciated. Uh, so on the, uh, on the progress, uh, the updates on the progress, here's some examples of ways that we can, um, you know, think things to think about, um, that, you know, the, of course, to, uh, to, uh, to do this as soon as possible is really important. If you could do it uh, the weekend after, uh, then, then great, but usually it takes uh, um, uh, the following week to just make sure that all the commitments are starting to come in. And so think about the ways that you can make this as a uh, verbalizing this, re this report, as well as having it as part of your bulletin. So you know, presumably we'll be doing it virtually and having somebody deliver this report uh, during the announcements or whatever the, the appropriate time is, but just to, to, to thank everybody who's responded, mention how many commitments we've received. If you have the data to offer a comparison and say, we're really encouraged, our numbers are, um, are higher than they were last year. Or, um, you know, if, if you're track, if you're getting close to it, use that, you know, be positive and just, uh, to say we're tracking really close to, uh, um, um, to where we were last year. And, and we just want to thank everybody who has responded and, and to remind you that we still have time. We'd love everybody to respond by Christmas um, you know, or by, by New Year's, but just to, to give them a timeline uh, that, uh, that we'll be responding. Uh, Kathy, I saw your text and yes, we will have these, uh, these slides available uh, on tomorrow for sure. Um, and then, uh, um, and then, of course, to uh, uh, if, you know, if they need to discuss their decision, their their current situation, to give them that uh, that guidance and say, if you have any questions, you have anything you'd like to discuss, please reach out to me as the stewardship chair or to um, to the priest in charge, the rector, whatever, whatever it might be. 
um, and uh, and and just to, uh, to to let them know that there's a way that they can reach out if they have any questions. Um, but above all, uh, be grateful and uh, and to show enthusiasm and to convey confidence. And uh, and so to the to the extent that we can do that, we really encourage it. And uh, and this is a this is a unique year, so um, our. Um, everything that we've received really should, we should be looking at this uh, from a point of um, just being truly grateful for, for the responses. Um, then uh, as we think about the various uh, versions of the thank you letter, uh, uh, could be a very simple letter that goes out uh, just to say, you know, thank you so much for your commitment. It's been a trying year, but everybody, the responses have been tr tremendous and we've received commitments from um, this many uh, parishioners, and uh, as we head into the new year, it's so comforting, comforting to know that we have your support. Uh, so that you know, that's that's a, a, a brief note. Of course, you can add to it, um, and uh, and and, uh, and and get a, you know add add some more personalization to it. But you know, it's, it's, these are some of the basics. We mentioned this early on as we were thinking about the the planning for what might happen when the stewardship program, uh, the the fall drive, comes to an end. Uh, one of the one of the things we said is prepare as you know a clergy should prepare to lock themselves in a room for a day and, and write some thank you notes. Well, that's that's a good way to uh, you know to think about that. Um, uh, that uh, if we can have these letters come from from the priest in charge uh, rector, that would be awesome. Um, but um, of course, a, a, a letter from the vestry, from the senior warden, from the stewardship chair, chair however you decide to do it, be very well appreciated. And then, as I mentioned, it's different from the confirmation letter. So the pledge confirmation, this is something that could come from the uh, um, the treasurer, could come from the stewardship chair. Um, but, you know, that this is more nuts and bolts. Uh, so according to your commitment form, your total pledge for the coming year is uh, which you, you indicated you wanted to fulfill over the course of. Um, so please let me know if, if there's any changes. Um, and then... Uh, if you if you're if you're having people do it via offer uh, envelopes, you know, mention how you're going to make them available. Uh, online giving is another thing you might want to make sure people are aware of if you have it set up, um, and let them know to uh, they can go either to the website or if they if they need inf more more help uh, getting that set up. So you know, this is, these are more of the formalities, but once again, it's an important letter and communication that should go out as as soon as you're able to. Eric, we have a couple questions in the chat. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I don't even have my chat window open. No, you're fine. That's what I'm, that's what I'm here for. Thank you. Um, but uh, Henry Richards asked, what if the responses have not been tremendous? Because you noted that in the um, thank you letter. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, uh, insert your own adjective here uh, from the ad libs game. Uh, but no, it, it, you don't you don't want to uh, to say that we were disappointed uh, uh but you know, it, however you can really phrase it and say, um, you know, given what we went through this year, uh, I'm pleased by the by the early responses, uh, but we have a lot more work to do. Uh, and uh, so, I, if you haven't already made your decision, uh, please uh, make sure to respond by such and such date. Uh, so it's it's kind of, uh, I guess, um, not, it's sugarcoating it for, for lack of a better word, but you don't, you don't want to take a negative tone and certainly not a, a, a be a accusatory in any ways, but certainly um, to, to thank them. So this is the follow-up, the thank you letter. Uh, of course, you're not going to be encouraging people who have already made a commitment to, uh, to respond, uh, but you could, you could just say, you know, we, we're pleased with the early response. Thank you so much for being a part of this. And uh, we have more work to do, and uh, um, uh, I look forward to providing you an update. And then, with the follow-up letter, you can use the other the the, lang the, the other language that uh, is similar. You know, if you haven't had a chance to participate, please please do so. Uh, Father Dave, Father Bob, anybody else would like to uh, opine on on ways that you can, uh, you know, given what we're going through this year, it's uh, it's inevitable there will be some who are feeling perhaps that it's not not a tremendous response. Uh, any any suggestions on best ways to phrase that i would i would just stand up and in love and gentleness speak the truth of exactly what happened acknowledge what's hard acknowledge what's been graciously given acknowledge what's missing and make it part of the shared experience 
and call people to, so how, so what are we going to do now? Um, have some ideas. It'd be nice if you had some ideas when you stood up there, but I, I would share the experience briefly, lovingly, and honestly looking to the future and acknowledging it's just a tough year. And this, you know, what are we going to do next? Totally agree. That's the, that's the correct strategy. I think total transparency. It, it becomes part of a shared experience when so much of our usual shared experience is being stripped away. Um, it's not the news we wanted. It's the news we have, but it's ours and we're in it together. And God is leading us to what's next together. That's great. Um, Henry asked to follow up, would it be best to present the data and let the data speak for themselves? <clears throat> So, yeah, if you have, you have been clear about your goals uh, going into the program, then when you show the comparison of, uh, of where you are according to that goal, then, then it will speak for itself for sure. But, uh, but certainly to, uh, to, to Father Bob's point, uh, to, to have everybody be a part of what's next and the solution uh, and, and having everybody kind of work, work towards us and give it, giving them some sort of gives them, give them some options on ways that we can help get to the next, whatever that next step is, then that certainly does make a lot of sense, but the data should speak for itself. If the, if, if they are aware that that was your goal from the very beginning. And we hope it, we hope it was, we hope that people are aware that our goal this year was to receive 50 commitments and we're, we're at 35. Uh, this is a challenge. Um, and going into the new year, um, uh, we we obviously have have more work to do, uh, yeah, so th that's that's part of letting the numbers speak for itself for sure. I think I would just you know uh, build on that just by saying that um, you know that the uh, the data uh, oftentimes um, need interpretation. You know, if you just throw the data out there um, and you think that it's speaking for itself because and we're sort of preaching to the choir in our little room here because we're all used to looking at this data and analyzing this data and figuring out, okay, so if I've got 35 out of the 50 that I wanted, what does that mean? You know, um, a lot of times data needs interpretation for a wider audience. Um, and there's a leadership issue involved in there too, because, you know, if, um, if there's, a, and again, not sugarcoating, being honest, I, I wholeheartedly agree with honesty and transparency, but, you know, if, if it's, if there's a, there's always positive things that you can find to point to, you know, it can be encouraging that you've got 35 out of 50, you know, because it's been a really rough year. So the fact that you've got 35 out of 50 uh, can be pointed to as an encouraging thing along with the, so now what do we do and where do we go from here? Um, or, you know, depending upon the person who's presenting and interpreting the data, you know, again, if it's looked at as a negative thing, then everybody that you interpret it to that way is going to think about it that way. So there is a leadership issue involved in there, too. And then we had a question from Caroline Nicholas. Can you combine both letters in one? I'm assuming, Caroline, you mean the pledge thank you and the pledge confirmation, but feel free to unmute yourself if I got that wrong. No, that, that is correct. Uh, we have a population that's online and we have a population that's not online, or I should say, who do not Zoom our services. So our communications has to be clear to both um, populations. So, I mean, I can make the announcement and Shirley can send out the letters and. Our treasurer can send out her letter, et cetera. But I was just wondering um, if we could collapse it so that um, you know we're sending out what the good news is, but we also sending out um, and thank you at what it is that we were hoping to get. For example, we were hoping to get 100% participation in pledges. We've got about 80%, and so you, Phyllis needs to know that our goal was it was 100 and uh, we only have 80 so we would really like for you to you know make your commitment as soon as possible christmas new year's day etc cetera, etc cetera, in in one 
package. Yeah, and, and what we've, uh, uh, on the next few slides, we have some mm -hmm. examples of the follow-up letters that would go out. Uh, and certainly, you know, the, 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 they sh we, they should, we should take an opportunity to, uh, um, uh, to thank the overall congregation for their participation and then encourage those who have yet to follow up. But what we would suggest is that if, if you can personalize it in any way, and it's just a, it's a matter of yeah. have these, somebody to, to, uh, to do this, to have a, a you know in a word document to, to put in a, a, an extra sentence for thanks so much for your commitment of a thousand thousand dollars for 2020 mm -hmm. you think you'd be able to uh, uh, participate again you know that, that kind of thing it's very specific to that person um so uh, it's a it's more of a personalization issue uh but everybody really should get a letter um it's just a matter of which letter they get and uh and absolutely uh, sending something out in all, all methods of communication, we should really explore it. So if, if there's a chance to then send an e-blast that serves as a thank you to the congregation, uh, uh, then use that as the opportunity. Okay. Once again, yeah. okay. uh, let them know where we are compared to the goal. Eric, okay. could I <clears throat> make a comment here? <clears throat> I think if, if the letter comes out from the, the rector priest in charge, it could certainly be one letter doing both, acknowledging the gift specifically and acknowledging the pledge specifically so much per week for you know, a total annual gift of whatever. But if you're a part of a congregation that where the priest doesn't know the, the details, uh, then I think uh, two letters would be preferable. I think it's always good for the spiritual leader to acknowledge the pledge, even if they don't acknowledge the specifics of the pledge. So um, if you're in a congregation where the priest does know, then you could do just one letter, th a thank you letter plus an acknowledgement of the details of the pledge. But if, you're, if you are a part of a congregation where the priest doesn't know, and where I'm serving right now is interim, I was told very clearly that it is the tradition of this parish that the priest doesn't know. So I sent out a general, generic acknowledgement letter thanking people for their, their pledge. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to get a specific, they're going to get a specific letter from the treasurer acknowledging the ver the details of the pledge. You see what well, I'm saying? Yeah. And right. I, I would, just to follow up on my question, mm -hmm. our priest sends out a letter at the end of the year, thanking individuals who have given Mm -hmm. whether they've pledged or they have not pledged. Yep. So they're used to receiving something from the priest. Right. And the idea of, <clears throat> you know, sending two or three letters out with kind of basic information, yeah. I, I think should come from the priest thanking as yes. well as committing. Thank you for your commitment. Right. I agree. Carol. And, and, you know, one of the principles I've learned in stewardship is you can't say thank you too often. <laughs> so even if they if they get a, a, a kind of a general letter from the priest at the end of the year thanking them for their support, they could also get <clears throat> those who have made a specific pledge during the campaign could also get a thank you letter for that pledge. I, I hear in Caroline's question a uh, question about efficiency and coordination, and I think those are important questions. What Dave said, though, um, you can. It's possible to be too efficient with thank yous. It's 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 okay to have, you know. Right, that's right. Okay, so uh, so we mentioned the follow up letters as well. So for those who have yet to respond, sending them something uh, that uh, that recognizes their um, uh, so their past report. So this is an example uh, for somebody who made a commitment to this year, this this current year's um, uh, 2020 campaign. And uh, so you say, well, this is where you could change the language. Our fall stewardship campaign was a success or is still in, in progress. Uh, results are being tabulated. Report will be available soon. Uh, we don't have a, a we haven't uh, we don't have a commitment from you on file. Uh, the budget vestry is preparing the budget and, and uh, this would be really important. Um, you know, this, this is a, a, obviously a very budget focused thing that we've been saying all along that we want to encourage people to take a more um, you know, a spiritual uh, 
uh, journey towards making their stewardship commitment. So, uh, so to the extent that you can include that in, in there as well. But you know, this is really just you know you haven't responded yet. You made a commitment last year. We hope you'll do that this year uh, and join us. Um, and then on the next uh, slide, for those who, uh, um, you know, as somebody who, who you could say that they you use the amount that they had pledged la in the last year, um, or for those who haven't pledged, didn't pledge last year, but have pledged in previous years, um, you could have a, a different kind of language. Um, and, uh, and of course, you know, for somebody who has never made a pledge, uh, perhaps it's somebody who is new to the congregation, uh, you know, use, use this as an opportunity to send them a special letter. Uh, this has been a, a difficult year for us, but we made it through thanks to the generous uh, support of our, uh, of, of our, uh, our pledging members. Uh, and I hope you'll consider joining us this year, uh, so, something to that effect. So, you know, use, use this as an opportunity to, to, uh, to personalize it, customize it, um, if you can, and if you can reference specific amounts, make it, make it all that much, much easier. Um, and to, to Father Dave's point, if it's, if it's something that only one or two closely held people have this information, then it would have to come from them. It would, it would come from the treasurer. Uh, but it's, it's, uh, it is important to uh, just, just get, the, get, have that question out there. Um, will, will you respond? Uh, we're so grateful for your past response or, or, or if you've never done it before, we hope you'll join us this year. Um, any other questions on on the follow-ups or the thank you letters, the uh, uh, the acknowledgement letters? Caroline here again. Mm -hmm. We have we have a population of individuals who are um, not always inclined to pledge, but they always give. Mm -hmm. So we want not to just say, you know, uh, this letter goes only to the pledges, because some people just Mm -hmm. yeah. don't want to commit themselves. So we would need to adjust or want to adjust this letter that says, thank you for your commitment or something or other. Yeah. Uh, they, they commit, they just won't put it in writing. Yeah. And so, so we are, we are here in December hoping to have information that will help us for the, for 2021. And if it's somebody who has never made that commitment before, but you know, you can count on them, um, then, you know, maybe it's a, it's a soft way of, of, of just thanking them for their, their support over the course of 2020. Um, and, uh, and, and we're just, we're grateful for your, your continued generosity. Uh, and we'd hope you'll, you'll give us a, a, a sense of if you're, you're able to continue at the same level. Maybe that's, it's as simple as that okay. for somebody who has outright said, I'm, I'm not going to pledge. I've certainly worked with many congregations who have had people who have said, no, you're just going to get something from me at the end of the year. It's coming from my, my uh, uh, charitable contribution account and, and, uh, and you'll get it when you get it. <laughs> it's too bad. Uh, we wish we could count on them um, for commitment. But, uh, but there might be ways that we can <clears throat> encourage them to give you some guidance. Yeah, and I'm just thinking that, you know, Carol Ann, that, that end of the year letter that the rector always sends or the priest in charge, yeah. that would be an appropriate time to do that. To say, you know, we're really grateful for your support this past year. Mm -hmm. uh, we hope we can count on that again this year. Uh, and, uh, you know, so that might be the, the, the appropriate opportunity to, for that letter to go out. Thank you, Dave. Yep. So we'd love to uh, to hear from you. We know that the results are being tabulated still, so you might not have this information, but just let us know if you're, how are you feeling about this year's uh, stewardship drive, your fall campaign, um, and uh, um, and just let us know if you're if you're as far as the response rates go. Uh, so question number two, if you scroll down, you, you think you're going to end up with more, about the same, a little less, much less. Uh, and then, uh, um, and then you know, important question for us, number three, is to help us understand, uh, do, you, do you think that there's been um, a sufficient amount of education and, uh, and learning as part of this journey? Uh, because that's really the, um, the ultimate goal, is to have, have folks who are uh, better prepared to make that kind of a commitment because there, um, there's been uh, for some for some it's taking a plunge it's a it's a leap of faith or whatever it might be uh, but for them to make that and take the next step so please let us know on these three questions where how you how you feel 
about the, the campaign and and uh, and where your your members are. I think that might be a critical mass, right? So uh, the uh, it's 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 uh, broken down pretty well by thirds here, uh, but uh, the biggest number would be those of you who are very encouraged. This is great to hear. Thank you for for sharing. Um, and uh, um, uh, so uh, quite a few are not quite there yet. You don't know how how your numbers are coming in, um, but you hopefully you will. Um, and, uh, and hopefully you'll join the encouraged, uh, category. Uh, so, so that's, that's really, that's great to hear. Not to, not to overuse the word encouraging, but, <laughs> um, however, interesting that the, the response rate is most of you are saying is slightly lower. So perhaps that's part of the trend that we're seeing in philanthropy this year is that, uh, that your, your major donors, those who have been with you, the most loyal are, are giving more. And we know that there are people who are struggling out there um, who aren't able to give as much as they would like or aren't able to give at all. And it's those who have the ability to do so that are giving more. So that might be the, the, uh, the correlation here that you're encouraged by the response, the, um, but the uh, participation is slightly less. Um, so, uh, and then, uh, and then this this final question. Uh, unfortunately, there's we can't we can't. Uh, it's not statistically relevant because <laughs> uh, because everybody there's a little bit in each category. But uh, it's it's helpful uh, to to see that there's some information going on that that uh, a little more than half of you would say that you you have a better informed um, membership, uh, and uh, so that that's encouraging, and uh, and and it would it's a it's. It's a good segue for something we'll be talking about at the end of today's call, which is preparing for uh, for next year and how we can have this continuation, uh, the continuation of the education. Uh, and so, all right, thanks so much. Does anyone want to share why they maybe responded the way they did, or um, just samples from their experience? Yeah, anybody from the from the very encouraged category would like to uh, to offer any any reasons why you're you're feeling that way, um, or we can go with the uh, um, with, with with the discouraged category. So, Eric, I, I could share something of my experience at the Church of the Good Shepherd if you'd like. At this point, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, um, so I I began my interim on the first of November. And that was also the, the kickoff day for the annual campaign. Uh, and Eric, you'll be happy to know that I preached three stewardship sermons in the three weeks of, uh, of our campaign. Um, so the day, uh, two days before our uh, co commitment Sunday, consecration Sunday, uh, the decision was made to discontinue in-person worship. So that was a real, a major uh, challenge for us. But fortunately, we had developed for the first time an e-pledge form. So we were able during on our, during our uh, commitment Sunday to actually post in the chat the link to the pledge form. And we had people actually do it. Uh, uh, so, but the, the, so our, our, res, our results of, from the campaign were kind of good news, bad news. The bad news was, because we didn't have any in-person worship at all on the Commitment Sunday, our response was about half of what it was last year. Uh, but the good news is that uh, we have we received 41 pledges uh, during, during Commitment Sunday, and 32 of those uh, were e-pledges. And we'd never had an e-pledge card before, so that was, a, that was good news. But uh, we are confident, really, that uh, many of these folks that, that, gave, that pledged last year will ultimately uh, renew their pledge for, for 2021. But uh, just last week, we sent out a letter to all those who pledged in 2020, but we hadn't heard from yet. And we also included a self-addressed stamped envelope in the letter. And we asked them to, and we included a, an, an additional copy of the hard copy of the pledge form. 
So uh, we're waiting for those uh, those letters to come back, but uh, we're confident that that we will, uh, you know, either come close to or maybe even exceed our our um, results from last year. But I think the fact that we had to close down from in person worship two days before the the commitment Sunday uh, was a definite factor in in the results and in the response that we received so far. Uh, the, an, another piece of good news in the, in the uh, campaign was we did for the second year in a row have a stewardship challenge and we raised $4,000 before the campaign started. And we said, if we get 25 members of the parish to do one of three things, either sign up for Vanco e-giving for the first time, increase their weekly pledge by $5 or pledge for the first time, then that $4,000 will uh, be given to the church. And uh, so far, we've, we, I think we've got about 20 out of 25. So it's very clear that we're going to make that, we're going to achieve that goal. And that challenge gift will, uh, will kick in. So, so that's some good news. But, uh, you know, in terms of the overall results, uh, we've received last year, we received 89 pledges for $221,000. This year so far, as of today, we've received 41 pledges for a total of 115000 so we've got some work to do, but we're, we're confident that we're going to reach the, our goals. Thanks, Father Dan. Mm -hmm. Would anybody else like to, uh, to share? I can only, Carol Anigan, I can only tell you what the stewardship chairperson told me a little while ago, because she's unable to get on doing... Uh, because of her job, of course, um, that we received 80% of the um, forms back, which I thought was really good. Um, they are also in our, our um, she didn't tell me what the money, a dollar amount was, but that they also were in fact following up with people um, to, re, you know, encourage them to send their forms in that the brochure that's SSS, CCS, and Eric and company helped us prepare was extraordinary. Absolutely extraordinary. People asked for a second copy so they could share with people they knew. I thought it was gorgeous myself and so well done. Um, and it highlighted the areas of our missions so that people could actually see where the money went, not just to the light bulbs and to the heat and the water and, you know, and things like that. And so that was, from my perspective, um, a very positive um, display, picture, image, whatever you want to call it, of the work that this particular church is doing. And I think that is some of the reasons why we've gotten about 80% of the um, pledge forms back, because it was tangible, it was real. Uh, you could actually, you know, uh, hold it in your hand and see some of the people who have participated in our outreach programs. So I have nothing to say, but thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm so glad that um, Shirley and company took advantage of your services. It was, it was better than ever than anything that I've seen in the past several years from stewardship. We also had, and I think this also highlighted some of the uh, commitment. We also had an outside speaker um, the Sunday before, um, I'm sorry, not on the 18th, but on Commitment Sunday, an outside speaker who spoke from her heart, um, an individual who believes in tithing. And, um, and she spoke to why it's important to give back. Um, some of the blessings that God gives us. So that, I believe, helped to stimulate 
um, individuals um, response positive responses. So it was a it was a really great stewardship season for us. So again, thank you. You're welcome. Your you know, work. Are you still recording your services? Oh yes. Absolutely. Is there a chance that we would be able to maybe get a recording of that service where that person spoke? Um, I could. The answer is absolutely yes, because I know we do that. Mm -hmm. And um, but I don't know that it's not on YouTube already. Hmm. Okay. And, and she, if it, she spoke on the twenty fifth of October. If it is so much the better, you yeah. know. If you could maybe just send me a link or something, I'd I'd sure. love to go watch it. Yep. Happy to do that. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you. Well, this is, it's a good uh, good segue to the to the reporting part of this and the ways that we can we can start to to share some of the um, some of the results. So, as as we think about the, uh, uh, the things that we should be thinking about for the for for celebrating and for or for continuing the the progress. Uh, you know, just to have something right after Commitment Sunday as soon as possible during the announcements, but also take advantage of the bulletins, the website, social media. Um, and the idea here is to, to recognize the folks who have been helping all along the way, share the goal and progress, illustrate the impact of the generosity, explain, you know, the next steps, the critical needs that you need and hope the, the desire for people to respond. Uh, and then to, to prepare them for uh, for the way that things will hopefully continue uh, so that this isn't just something we are doing in, in October and November, uh, but that there's a, an ongoing conversation about stewardship. Um, so, you know, there's, there's a variety of things that you can do uh, in the reports uh, that go out and, and how and, and the, uh, the statistics to focus on. Uh, but so, of course, there's the, the total amount pledged uh, that you, if, if, to the extent that you have that information, uh, ready to be shared, uh, but you know there's also, of course, the number of commitments being made, the percentage of families participating. Um, so, as Carol, to your point, 80%. That's awesome, uh, Father Dave. You're halfway there. Um, you know the, the average pledge amount. Uh, the if you have the the, the results on in this number who have increased, I love that challenge idea uh, because you you're already prepared to report on some of these things. People who went up by a certain amount. Um, and, uh, and progress towards your goal comparisons that you can make. Um, and, uh, but then, you know, to, to really just take, make sure we're, we're expressing gratitude, recognizing those who have participated, um, uh, and, uh, and, and, it's, and, you know, to some, some, uh, uh, I know some congregations I've worked with have in their annual report, they'll actually publish a list of pledgers. If you're prepared to do that, that's, that's great. You know, it's of course, without, without dollar amounts, but, you know, uh, but the same thing is true for volunteers, those who were part of your team with planning, those who gave testimonials, those who made phone calls, whatever their role may have been. Those who manage the Zoom chat, <laughs> I'm sure there's probably a role for, for a bunch of people uh, that they, they filled. Uh, the, an example uh, of the report um, that could, you know, that could be made. This is one um, uh, where there's a, a, a from a congregation from a couple of years ago. Uh, but you know, it talk, uh, there, it mentions the mechanics. It talks about uh, it mentions the the committee that we had. Uh, talked about the theme uh, that we chose. Uh, second paragraph jumps right into the goal, um, and uh, this was our intention. Um, and, uh, and, and, uh, and then it final finishes out by, if you haven't signed in your pledge, we need everybody's participation. Very simple, but, uh, um, you know, w ways to, to think about this in both written form as well as, uh, as what's verbalized and shared with folks. Um, and, uh, and. So uh, and then uh, so Henry, when you, right, when you start to recognize pledgers, you know those who pledged some, some uh, yeah, you're you're right. And to, to Caroline's point, there are probably some others uh, who are are regular in their commitments and are are, are really supportive of the congregation who who haven't uh, who aren't pledgers, aren't regular pledgers. So, uh, um, but yeah, I mean, the, the 
it, it gets it really just gets to the point of you of what you're trying to do as far as your commitment process. And we've talked about this before that it's much more than just the treasure part of it. There's also the time and the talent. Of course, we we just finished up a, an annual campaign where the focus was primarily on on the treasure part of this. Uh, but if you are if you are absolutely tabulating those kinds of commitments, we should definitely uh, recognize recognize those as well. Um, Eric, I'd like to uh, suggest that in our reporting to the congregation, we should always, in addition to saying thank you as often as possible, we should also mention that it's not too late for them to submit a pledge, even if they haven't already done so. Because, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of times people think because the campaign is over, it's too late to, to make a commitment. But I think in all of our reporting, whether it's in the bulletin or the uh, announcements, uh, we should always emphasize that it's not too late uh, and please, uh, you know, continue to uh, consider making a, a commitment for 2021. So that can be a, a regular feature of our reporting, reporting out the results. Definitely. Yeah. So, uh, all right. And then um, before we, we, we move on to the final part of our program to talk about project resource, I want to just re touch on these year-end giving strategies once more. Uh, we talked about this on our, on our last call. I just want to keep this front and center because we're, we're coming upon that time of year uh, when people are making donations to all sorts of charitable causes. We just had Giving Tuesday this past, uh, past week. Um, and by all accounts, it'll, it'll have been one of the, uh, the, the most successful Giving Tuesday. Um, and, uh, and, you know, people are, are just being asked. So consider asking them to, to make a special gift, a Christmas appeal gift to uh, your congregation in support of your own uh, special causes and ministries. Um, and, uh, you know, another thing to think about is uh, you know, if, if you, you can encourage your members that they, you know, perhaps they'd like to consider making a special gift of appreciated securities and stock. If somebody is, is sitting on some, some stock that has gone up a lot over the course of the past year, um, you know, they can donate that directly to the, uh, the congregation for your, your uh, critical needs and they'll avoid those, tax, those capital gains and get to donate, uh, deduct that. Um, that donation. Um, and then there's also some significant tax benefits in this year's CARES Act. Somebody who would normally be limited in the amount that they give uh, and get a claim a tax deduction on, uh, uh, usually at 60% of your adjusted income. This year, it's 100%. So somebody might uh, who, who typically is, says, well, I, I'm only going to give away $50,000 a year because that's all I could. Uh, you know, perhaps they, uh, they now can give a lot more uh, based on that, that formula. Um, and then even those folks who are limited and, and, and had only done, uh, had not done any uh, tax deductions before because they, they're always doing the, uh, uh, the standard deduction, you know, this year they can claim a $300 uh, extra deduction. So perhaps they would be interested in making a special gift this year of $300. Um, and this, that's per household, whether it's an individual or a couple filing jointly, but it's still, it's another thing that you might want to uh, uh, make people aware of. Uh, so uh, we wanted to, to just briefly touch on this because we're in that month. This is the time um, and uh, uh, for, uh, for these kinds of appeals that are taking place all over uh, New Jersey and all over the, the country. Um, so if you have any opportunity to make that, make that appeal of your own, I would definitely recommend it. Um, so I'd let, uh, I'd like to hand it over to, to Father Bob and to Father Dave now to, to, to talk about uh, next steps on, on the project resource team and the stewardship commission. So, uh, um, uh, who, sh who, who would like to take the lead here? Uh, um, Father Bob or? Bob, why don't you go ahead and I'll, I'll, uh, finish up. Oh, you're on mute. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. Um, I'm Bob Fitzpatrick. I'm chair of the stewardship commission along with Dave and we're, we use the name Project Resource for the Stewardship Commission. And some of you have heard that name, some of you haven't. But we are putting together a new Stewardship Commission under the leadership of our Bishop Chip Stokes for the Diocese of New Jersey. Um, I'm not sure if, if, who's on the call here tonight, but um, letters have gone out from the Bishop. People have accepted the uh, six lay seats, six clergy seats. And we will be going back out 
booked for training sessions into the new year and working with parishes in the new year. Uh, as you've seen CCS do, uh, we will be adapting that and carrying that forward. And CSES will still have a continuing role that's being shaped now. But we're excited to be going back out as the Stewardship Commission for 2021. Dave? You're muted, Dave. You're on mute, too. Yeah, there you go. Okay, uh, just to follow up with what Bob just said, we're uh, the project resource team is uh, reforming and um, we're, we've scheduled our kind of a reorganizational meeting for in a couple of weeks. But uh, beginning in the new year, we're going to be available to assist, uh, to support what you're doing in your local parishes, to provide um, kind of uh, the resources that you'll need to uh, continue the growth that's taken place, the exciting growth that's taken place over these last uh, 20 weeks. And uh, uh, so please don't hesitate to give us a call if you have a question, if there's some way that we can be of assistance, whether it's in, uh, in terms of uh, plan giving or uh, uh, major gifts or, or annual giving, whatever the area, uh, we are uh, going to be ready and, and eager to be of assistance if we can. And I just wanna make a note that uh, there's, a, there's an error. George Funk is a member of Church of the Good Shepherd in Pittman. Uh, so we need to change that on the slide for for uh, tomorrow. But uh, and, I'm, we're, we're, and I'm not even from Pittman. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. He's from uh, Turnersville, is it? Or? Washington Township. Right? Washington Township. Yes. So I wonder, uh, besides George, good to see you. Uh, I'm glad you were able to get on the call tonight. Anyone else on the team that's actually with us physically tonight? I know I've heard from several that are going to be with us tomorrow, but anybody else, if you are, please Unmute yourself and, and say hello. Hi, Father Davis, Eva Lesniak oh, from Church hi, of the Holy Spirit. Good. It's exciting to have some of the members here, but in some ways we have Eva and George here, but the rebuilding of the Stewardship Commission for the diocese really came out of your work as a community of people doing stewardship ministry in parishes. Right. And just while there are stewardship commission membership seats, there is now effectively a diocese wide stewardship team in I, how many we've, we've heard from and, and been with and benefited from the examples of nearly 50 parishes throughout the course of these workshops over the, since the spring. And this is uh, the, the phrase that Phyllis uses is a community of practice mm -hmm. where the ministry of stewardship is supported from parish to parish and parish to diocese and diocese to parish so that the oneness of the church is reflected in this uh, by your good work. So thank you. Mm. Thank you both. And thank you, uh, Eva and George and uh, so look forward to keeping the conversation going. So, uh, any any uh, any other um, you know last thoughts, questions, uh, comments, things people would like to share about uh, um, about their program this year, lessons learned. Uh, um, and we'd love to love to hear from you. And and also as as uh, as Evelyn mentioned, we'd love to hear from if once your reports are ready, if you can share those with us. Um, share those with Evelyn via email if she put it in the chat that would be really great uh, just so we can uh, we'd love to see those reports um, and uh, yeah and then you know if, if you um, it, or you know if you'd like to, uh, to similarly put it in the uh, put your own responses in the uh, in the chat or send them to us via email that afterwards that'd be great too so um, but if there's there's nothing else you know we can we can certainly end a few minutes early let you get on with your evenings but uh, um, but thank you so much and thank you all uh, for for being uh, a continued part of this uh, these programs really really appreciate your time so uh, father Bob would you like to uh, uh, lead us in our, our closing prayer tonight I would love to and um, and before a prayer just 
thank you to everybody for their ministry and stewardship in your parish and sharing that here. Stewardship season is winding down with the collections, the reports, and the thank yous, but stewardship is a year-round process. Think and talk and pray about the lessons you've learned and share them with your team members, with us, with people who might become your successors some days in that parish. Um, think of us at Project Resource if we can support you, not just in the fall. We're here year-round, and there's, there's work to do and ministry to do and seeds to plant and soil to tend year-round. So thank you. Let us pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we thank you for this day now turned to evening for the things that you have given us to do, the gifts with which we have done them. We also present to you the things that we have not done today, the things that we will face again tomorrow or that we turn over to your care and place at the foot of your cross. Help us with all the things that you give us to walk in. Help us to use all the things that you give us to show your love in the world as your church, now and forever. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be on you now and rest on you always. Amen. Amen. And if I could just ask Dave, Bob, uh, Evelyn, and Eric to just hang out on Zoom for just a little bit, uh, just to talk over briefly um, some logistics for tomorrow. Good night, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Um, well, I'm, I'm one of the reasons that we're, uh, that the, uh, the leadership team is still on the call. Um, I, I wanted to briefly ask for your help. I have a funeral tomorrow here in the parish and, um, our session tomorrow is at 10 AM and I need to, I need to leave here, uh, around 10 30. I know my role uh, tomorrow, uh, like tonight is finite, but I wanted to mention that to you, um, apologize for the change of plans. And if we need to make any arrangements, um, See, however small they are, I just didn't want to surprise you. Do we want to talk about project resource then first before we go? Just because I feel like that may, you added a lot of value, I feel like when talking about it. So maybe we just move that to the beginning. The yeah, that was my thought. I, yeah. I think it's just a simple agenda switch, you know, yeah. for project resource. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm okay with that if everybody else is. I apologize for the change. No. You know, you know what happens in this business. That's right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, we appreciate you making the time to to be on the call. You know, yeah. so thank you. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm excited. Right. Yeah, me too. Right. That was great. <laughs> and I think on on Wednesday, as we normally have Natalie um, and Tina and Tina. So uh, and I don't know. I don't. I don't think Sergio has ever joined us on these. Uh, but who knows. <coughs> Yeah, we we invited him, but we'll, we'll see. Yeah, and uh, one other um, small correction that I had for the uh, the the team slide too is um, his last name is it's there's an extra A and it's not Delgado, it's just Delgado. Delgado. Oh. D e l g a d o. Right. Got it. Thank you. I didn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> And that's it. I just wanted to, you know, uh, just wanted to try to get that squared away for tomorrow. So thanks for for hanging out. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, everybody. Have a good evening. Thank you. Have a good evening. See you tomorrow.